Hey, it's Marco from Craft Coffee Spot. And if you're about to choose your first espresso machine, this video is for you. I've tested a lot of entry-level espresso machines, and it's not easy to choose one because there are a lot of machines out there, and actually decision is pretty subjective. When I'm usually asked for a recommendation, I always tell people, well, depends how much you want to spend, how much work you want to do, and how good of espresso you want. So today I want to pick some machines that I think are good for beginners and meet the following criteria. One, it should make good espresso, something that can beat Starbucks. Two, it should be simple and easy to use. It shouldn't require that much practice to get right. And three, it should cost under $1,000. You can spend a lot of money on espresso machines and equipment, but I think if you're just starting out, you don't need to spend that much. I chose machines that you can kind of learn and grow on and develop a really good espresso. So I'm going to go through each espresso machine individually, talk about why I like them, why it's good for a beginner, and then I'll wrap up which is the main things you should look for when choosing an espresso machine. So the first machine we're going to talk about is the Breville Barista Express Impress. It's one of Breville's newer models. They made some changes to this to make it very beginner friendly. So first off, it has an integrated grinder and a tamping system. So that means all you have to do is slide in that porta filter, push a button to grind, and then you can just pull this lever down to actually tamp it and flatten out the puck. And on top of that, the machine actually gives you feedback if you don't have enough coffee and will automatically adjust to add some more coffee next time. This just removes so much of the work in espresso. You don't need to weigh and grind and dose it. It does it all for you. On top of that, it makes very good espresso because Breville actually runs this at nine bars of pressure. Now, keep in mind that high pressure is what makes espresso espresso. High pressure and finely ground coffee to make a nice concentrated drink a lot of flavor. Now, the problem is a lot of machines actually run far higher than the standard nine bars of pressure. Don't be fooled when you see a machine claiming to run at 15 or 20 bars as if that's something special. Actually, I've tested a lot of Breville's and the pressure they generate and Breville reduced the pressure on this model to nine bars to get it just right. And that actually leads to much more smoother and more balanced flavor. Top of that, this interface is really simple with a pressure cage in the middle and one and two cup preset options. So you can always get the same amount of espresso from each drink. Now I will point out there is one big downside to this model and that is the steam wand. It takes some time to start off and it takes longer to steam milk on it. And so it, it's not the best there. And if you're really into lattes and cappuccinos, I would encourage you to look at the Brevel Barista Touch, which is right around our price budget. But otherwise, I think the Breville Barista Express is excellent for under $1,000 and very easy to use right out of the box for any beginner. So next, let's talk about the Breville Bambino. So notice the big difference here is it doesn't have a grinder like the Barista Express Impress. Now, what I found comparing this against other models with the grinder is that by having a separate espresso machine and grinder, you can generally make a better espresso with a standalone grinder. And you can actually save some money too. Now that said, when you have two separate items, it is much harder to use because you have to grind separately, weigh that out, transfer it over to the porta filter, and then tamp it. So this will be harder to use. That said though, if you get a grinder like the Bronza Encore ESP that can grind for both espresso with the Bravo Bambino, and you can use that to make pour over or even French press coffee. So you can kind of have a two-in-one that actually works a little bit more broadly too and can save some money. I also like the Breville Bambino because it's a newer thermojet heating system, which starts in three seconds. And the steam one on this is more powerful than the Express Impress. The interface is really simple with a one and two cup brewing option, which is really all you need. So I've always recommended this for kind of the budget price point, and maybe you have a separate espresso grinder that you're looking into. So a quick word on grinders. So if you're getting into espresso, your grinder is as important or more important than your espresso machine. There are a lot of people out there that say you should be spending more on your grinder than the espresso machine itself. And keep in mind, espresso is a really nuanced drink that requires a very fine and very precise grind. So if you're sitting here thinking, I have a grinder, keep in mind a blade grinder does not count. You absolutely need a good burr grinder. I recommend this Brazza Encore ESP at a minimum. And you can spend a lot more on espresso grinders. And if you do want to save, I would recommend getting a hand grinder like this Onesie Presso J Max, or you get a Onesie Presso X Pro. That'll both work really well for espresso. But do not skimp on your grinder. Do not skip this part because your espresso grinder is very important. 
If you are looking for more grinders, we've reviewed a lot on our site, Craft Coffee Spots, so you can always go there. Now let's talk about the Gaja Classic Pro. What stands out about this espresso machine is it has a boiler inside. And boilers are generally considered better heating systems than the thermal blocks that you'll find in other models from Breville or DeLonghi. The idea here is when you have a boiler, you're just heating up a bigger pool of water, which just becomes more temperature stable than something like a thermal block, which is running cold water through a block of metal. So you can get better temperature stability with the Gaja. On top of that, this is the new Gaja Evo Classic, which has been redesigned with a nine bar pump. So you get a lower pressure, which leads to much more smooth and balanced espresso. Now, I will say this is a more controversial pick because while you can make better espresso than some of the other machines from Breville or DeLonghi, it is much harder to do on the Gaja Classic. And so I question whether to recommend this to a beginner. For starters, one of the problems is this machine can overheat if you leave it on too long because there isn't a good PID to manage temperature swings. So you're going to have to learn to kind of manually purge out some water or cool off the machine, then let it reheat a little bit to get a good espresso. Secondly, these buttons right here are really simple, but they're also manual. So the brewing is either on or off. And so you need to scale to measure out how much espresso is coming out. And then you'll notice that it's a little tight here underneath the brew head and the drip tray is a little high. So it can be a little difficult to use. Now that said, the Gaja Classic also has a 58 millimeter portafilter, which is bigger than the Breville or DeLonghi portafilters, 54 and 51 millimeters. And that's nice because you can just spread water more evenly over your espresso, and get a higher extraction, you can grind finer. So yet again, that does help you get a better espresso here if you're willing to learn this machine. I debated including it, but it is really popular. It is at a really good price point, about $500. So this can be just a great one to use if you're willing to put in the time and really learn this machine. So if you're intrigued by the Gaja Classic, I recommend you consider the Ranchilio Silvia, which is the next pick here. So the Ranchilio Silvia has a boiler and a 58 millimeter commercial size portafilter. The nice thing though about the Ranchilio is that the boiler is bigger than what's on the Gaja Classic. So you have a lot more stable temperature. So it's a lot easier to use and control. Also, you have a little more cup clearance here underneath the brew head, which also makes it easier to use. And so this makes a really good espresso. I really like this machine. Also, these things will last a really long time. So even though it's close to our price max here, this model that I have, it's been loaned to me from a friend who bought it secondhand, and it's easily 10 years old, and it works great. Ranchilli was actually more known for his commercial machines they sell in coffee shops, so you're going to get a really good quality with this model. The Steam Wand's also very powerful and probably makes some of the best latte art I've ever seen. I think one of the downsides, though, is that as a beginner, you'll find that it's a little hard to control the Steam Wand because it is so powerful. Another downside is that it does take a while to warm up. You're probably talking about 10 or 20 minutes in the morning to, to heat up that big boiler that's inside of this machine. So there are some downsides here, but I think... If you want to be an espresso for the long haul, this is a great lifetime value and a really high potential to it. So I have one more recommendation that's a little different than the other espresso machines, and that is the Philips 3200 Latte Go. This is a super automatic espresso machine. So where everything else I recommend is a semi-automatic, where you have to do some of the work with a porta filter. The Philips 3200 Latte Go is a super automatic, where all you have to do is push a button, and it's very easy to use. The screen has multiple drink options where you can customize the strength and the volume. And all you have to do is push that button and the machine does the rest. And what I really like with the Philips Latte Go models is that they have an automatic milk frother. What's nice is that it can make a nice thick latte or cappuccino foam for your drinks. And it's very easy to clean because it's only two pieces with no tubes. So the Philips 3200 is super easy to use and super easy to maintain, which I really like. Now, there's one big downside, and the espresso is just not as good as the other recommendations I've made here. It tends to taste a little flat and thin. And really, this is just a trade-off you make when getting a super automatic espresso machine, is that it's much easier to use but they tend to cost a little bit more, and the espresso just isn't quite as good. Like I said, I like the Philips 3200 Latte Go because it is just so easy. The automatic milk frothing is there, and it's at a good price. But just keep in mind, you are trading off some quality there. So there are some things you can do to get more out of the Philips 3200 Latte Go, which I've done on a full review of that machine. So you can go check that out first. 
I think the Phillips 3200 Latte Go is a great gift option just for the ease of use and pure simplicity of it. Okay, so we've just gone through a lot on this video, but I want to summarize the main things you should look for when choosing an espresso machine. So first, look at the heating system. Should be a boiler or a thermal coil with a PID. Those things will ensure that it's a pretty even temperature for a nice, even extraction, smooth taste of espresso. Second, look for nine bars of pressure. Don't need to get that many bars of pressure. Actually, less is more, so nine bars is usually the best. Then think about your grinder. I said, do not skimp on your grinder. If you want to get a standalone one, you can actually save some money and maybe get something more to your preference. If you want an integrated one, that can actually make your life a lot easier though. The interface, simpler is better. If you can't understand the controls just by looking at it, it is going to be pretty hard to use. Also, consider super automatic machine because those are almost foolproof and won't involve any learning curve at all. Although keep in mind, you will trade off some of the quality of your espresso. And then last, price. Like I said, you can spend a lot on an espresso machine, well over $1,000. But here I've tried to find more budget options and things that I think you can just learn and grow and really build over time. If you have any other questions about any other machines that you want to look at, just leave a question below in the comments and I'll make sure to get back to it. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider hitting like as it really supports this channel and subscribe to see your future videos.